Welcome back to another episode of Athlete POV. We're sitting down with Brady Powell, George Mason commit for baseball. Um, we're excited to have him on. Can't wait to hear what he has to say. What's going on, Brady? Uh, not much, man. I'm just thanks for having me on. Yeah. So, so tell me a little about yourself. I know senior in high school right now, committed to George Mason. How did that all form for you? Like the recruiting process, and just you know a little bit um, about yourself. Um, my recruiting process was a little different than uh, your normal recruiting process, especially because I'm only. I'm like five seven five eight, so as a shorter recruit, it's a little more difficult to get 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 eyes on you. But with COVID and everything, going into COVID, like what was that? My sophomore year, I was like five four, like one thirty. Hmm. And then I kind of just put my my nose down and got after it over COVID. Kind of put on weight, grew a little bit, and then my that summer, there was no the, the recruiting whatever. Nobody could come see us, so hmm. I was shut out completely couldn't be seen and then my junior year things started to speed up a little bit got a little bit crazy for like three weeks like phone calls every day type thing and then ended up with three schools but like I chose between and then I had to go with George Mason because of like they they showed them those love and then yeah yeah that's pretty cool especially with COVID going on and being a high school athlete with recruiting all over the place um, that was definitely an issue for myself. In high school, I graduated 2020. So when you were probably a sophomore and I was a senior, I played football. It was like right after the football season ended is when people, as like that March was when we left school. But yeah. um, for me, I had like Division three colleges coming to try to talk to us for football right after the season. But we actually, my recruiting process, it was pretty lucky how they were able to come to our school. But I ultimately chose not to pursue college sports to more focus on like a business aspect. But anyway, um, yeah, but COVID was definitely probably, yeah, with recruiting. It definitely you lost part of it and then it all happened at once, I feel. So that was yeah. definitely probably uh, something different that happened for you specifically in your class. Absolutely. I, I say a lot of people kind of like use it as an excuse, but for me personally, mm -hmm. the, that two, three months that I could just like, just do, like just train and just do, I don't know, but I I think I can just focus on baseball. I had nothing else to do because the world's like shut out. So right. So now when when you're like home, I'm sorry that cut out. I said I'm just grateful for those two to three months because it like made me the player that I am right now. Absolutely. And when you're isolated like that, away from the team, away from coaches, and you just yourself with like a, a baseball or something, and you're just working out or just staying active. I feel like yep. a lot of things can develop with someone personally, especially a high school athlete looking to make the next step to, you know, the next level. What were some of like, what were some of like the, the habits that you developed, you think, during COVID all by yourself alone? Um, I would say my biggest thing was just like my eating. Like I, obviously I said I was like very small. I was like, I was, I've always been like muscular, but I was never like thick, if that makes sense. Like I was never right. like, never like looked at me and was like, man, that kid looks strong. But after, in, during COVID, I focused on my, like, nutrition and tracking my, like, and my calorie intake and all that stuff. Mm. And my routine, like, I, that was the first time I really, like, was lifting. Like, I, me and my dad built a squat rack with, like, cement and uh, wood. Wow. That's pretty and cool. It, yeah. We rented some stuff from a, a gym that, like, shut down. We just rented a couple plates and a barbell and... That was like I'm like I lifted on like a on like a schedule like program, mm. yeah. Wow, yeah, and <laughs> I guess like how you say you built like a squat rack with your dad. That's like a good family bonding moment too, I guess. And yeah, everyone came closer. <laughs> we also about cussing and yelling because it was not easy. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I guess it's amplif like amplify with a fam with your family, but I feel like anybody when you're around them too much, like. Like, like you just said, like tensions boil and then you got to get used to living with everyone for like an extended amount of time. So obviously, but then going back to like how you developed like a plan now for fitness, like it gave you like sort of like a different outlook because now, oh, I'm by myself now. Like maybe I have time to really think about like how I can really benefit from this. So yeah, um, I had, it was either make it happen or sit there and do nothing. So yeah, <laughs> see, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, it paid off. Now, but now being like, um, like you mentioned on the shorter side, was it like a surprise to you, like of height that you grew, sort of, if that makes sense? Um, sort of. I kind of, I'm built a lot like my uh, grandfather, and he grew late too, so it was kind of like, 
I was hoping it would happen, but in time, like I was worried about it, but it, I mean, it ended up working out, but. Would you credit like the height to like a reason that you've got more recruited or do you think that really wouldn't have mattered at all because of like your like determination sort of? Uh, I would say if I was 6'3", six, 6'4", six, I wouldn't be like the player I am. Like I wouldn't have worked as hard as I do. Like it's always like you have that chip on your shoulder type of thing. Like you watch guys like Marcus Stroman pitch and they're just like, they like type of thing. Right. Yeah, I feel like I like so many people probably say to themselves that really don't try or really put it all they can. If I was just a couple inches taller, maybe I would, you know, get that offer or something like that. But I feel like it comes from internally. Like obviously, obviously it helps to be taller. Yeah. But <laughs> in any sport, baseball, football, basketball, right? But um, without the mindset that I think you developed in like that, that time span from, like you said, sophomore year to now, nothing really happens. Nothing really gets put together the way that, you know, you got it you got it made to where it is right now. So I feel like that's kind of more important. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so now, would you say that during COVID now, well, post-COVID say, not like not like as bad as it was, would you say that the habits that you developed now continue, like where you are now and in the future? Or what do you think really I, sticks with you now? I think it definitely sticks with me. I mean, that's kind of like the foundation I laid for myself, and then I've just been like following as much as I possibly can now. I mean, it's a little difficult because we're, like, at school and, like, we have stuff that we have to do daily. Mm -hmm. And it's not playing baseball, but I try my best to follow the same habits that I did then. Do you think some of, like, the things that you've developed, like, rub off on your teammates or other, like, friends that you might have? I mean, I would – I'd like to say so, yeah. I mean, I try my best to be, like, a role model for people around me and showing people, like, what hard work and dedication can do, but – I, I would just I'd hope so <laughs> yeah it's always a great uh, a great like question to ask of like stuff that you've done now you can influence other people especially when you're doing the right thing and that's super important to, you know because not everyone thinks or does the same everything that like you know I would consider yourself a successful person in this area like someone that yourself would do so I feel like it's definitely like like where you can think of it as bigger as bigger than yourself sort of how you can now yeah. like use what you know to like now spread it and like be like sort of contagious and like a good vibe sort of um, Absolutely. approach like where where are you from like high school wise like what area oh, I'm from Lesby Maryland I go to Patuxent High School gotcha Maryland all right yeah I'm from I'm from Jersey East Coast yeah that's where my uh, a lot of my family's from like uh, East Jersey oh really that's nice I don't know because they're like it's like my cousins and uncles but I got you yeah I used to live in, in New York City in Staten Island and we moved here uh, like 2013 so I've been all around um, not all around <laughs> like the New York City metropolitan area but that, that's pretty cool yeah I played at um, the the Cal Ripken experience for a baseball tournament <laughs> in Aberdeen yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> super nice love that place I only played there a couple of times when I was little I'm surprised we didn't play there more often yeah, I mean, um, they, they had, like, the Orioles. Are you, like, an Orioles fan? I'm actually a Pirates fan, which is, like, just <laughs> that. Because my, my other half of my family is from, uh, like, the Pittsburgh area in Pennsylvania. So, it's kind of just, like, I, it was that or the Yankees. <laughs> I'm a Yankee fan, man. I'm excited for that. <laughs> I, I am because the Pirates never make it to the playoffs. So, I'm, like, I try to I be a Pirates like yeah, the, no. pir the Pirates are like, like obviously fans are fans, but I feel like the Pirates may might not be the best run organization. No, not at all. If that if makes they sense. They try to win baseball games. They try to make money. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's where like sports and business, I feel, is really like conflicts because there's some owners that like spend a lot of money, like the Dodgers, the Yankees, and you got the Pirates who are just in it to, you know, keep a low payroll and then, um, you know, collect the check. <laughs> nope. But then you got yeah. like, but then you have like the Rays who like, like don't really spend too much, but like they're good. So that's like how. Um, you it's know. all it's all, at the end of the day. But the like the pay like the pay gap in baseball, mm. or like the gaps or whatever. Like the Pirates have like no money. The Yankees and the Dodgers have a ton of money. Yeah, and it's not like there's a limit that you there's no salary cap. <laughs> so like. Um, the, the, there sort of is a salary cap, but you get like a pat on the wrist if you... Right, like, right, like a luxury tax. Yeah. So now, going into college, what do you think you're most excited for? And once you get there, what do you think you're going to do first and stuff like that? Um, I'm most excited for probably like, I mean, being on my 
being by myself a little bit, I mean, I don't know, sort of, sort of. I'm a little nervous about being by myself, but mainly just being around guys that are obsessive about the game because, like, those are guys, like, they dedicated their whole, like, lives to be Division One athletes, and that's kind of the people I want to stuff with. And then when I get there, the first thing I'm going to do is, like, I have to remember the fact that I'm restarting. Like, because I'm, I'm successful here, but I'm not – I'm nobody there. Like, I'm a hmm. small – big pond when I get there so I gotta restart and put my head put my head down and get to work right and I feel like so many kids sometimes fall into that trap especially with college college athletes specifically like you can be like a captain at your high school but then you go to college you're like that new freshman kid that's not really established at all and you gotta yeah. re reestablish everything that you've made in your you know career earn that respect and then you know eventually um you know make a name for yourself but what you said earlier how you were really looking forward to get with people that are like like-minded like yourself i mean don't hold yourself like low there like you're one of those people as well you know yeah. so i wouldn't like cut yourself short there but yeah that's definitely excited to like you know really surround yourself with as dedicated people as as yourself so that's pretty mm -hmm. exciting yep absolutely so now obviously someone like yourself doesn't just get get lucky to like where you end up what would you say has been like the really the most important like habit or like dietary like food that you've really been like into that really has got you onto the right track that you're on um habit i would say like just being i don't know just like being hard like not like hard on myself but like competitively hard on myself if that really makes any sense but like hmm. understand i have to do so much more like like we talked about earlier like as a shorter athlete like there's an extra motivation you have to ship on your shoulder like you're trying to prove people wrong so like hmm. that's the thing is that my habits are formed because of the chip or that I have like with myself and I'm trying to push myself and the in you because of that if that makes sense yeah and definitely then, I feel like when you have like some sort of limitation say like your height you got to work that much harder and I feel like some people don't get that and like they can use it as an excuse of like oh it's just not meant for me or they can use it as a chip on your shoulder motivation like um like you're using right now and then dietitian I'd say like or dietary I'd say biggest thing would be like i eat a ton of chicken over uh over quarantine i can't even like look at chicken anymore protein That'd be like yes i can't even do it anymore that <laughs> egg, I, like six eggs in the morning and like ch breast of chicken at night yeah those are like the two main things i guess and then just like keep myself accountable with my like macronutrients and calories and i actually slacked off a little bit recently lost some weight but now i'm, I'm back on it now hmm yeah, it's super important. I feel like consistency is definitely a big, like, one of the biggest factors of, like, maintaining some sort of success in, like, not only, like, athletically, but just, like, habit, habit, like, your habits of, like, you building on something that can get into something uh, bigger that just comes natural, you know? Yeah, for sure. Right, so now, your whole career, baseball career, have, have you played any other sports besides baseball? I played basketball, I played basketball up until my freshman year, and then football, I played until my sophomore year, which I always, always loved football. But I, I tore my MCL my freshman year, and then my sophomore year had a major concussion, and then couldn't really play anymore. Gotcha. No, I only asked that because I wanted to just get an overall picture. So now, with your whole career—baseball, football, basketball—who has been like the one or a couple people like a role model to you that you really always look up to for like, say, advice, or you know, they're always like keeping you on the right track, sort of. Um. I mean, an obvious answer is my dad, because, I mean, my dad is my high school coach, which a lot of people would, like, say things about that, but my dad been a coach for me, he's been my dad as a role model, and my coach is a role model, and, like, separate entities, if that makes sense, and then hmm. one else, so I grew up around, like, his his team, because he was, he took over as a head coach, I think, like, only a couple of years before I was born, so a oh, lot wow. of the guys... On, on that team I would look up to so I have like plenty of role models from like all of the great teams that he's had at the, at the program wow that's actually kind of relatable my dad was a high school football coach but then he stopped <laughs> a couple of years after I was born but then he picked up and became my coach like in youth sports football especially yeah. but um yeah I completely can relate to you where you said like um people might judge you differently if your dad's your coach but when you then you said how you there's a separate stuff like between your dad and then when he's your coach and I can completely relate that how that's so different especially if I'm assuming your dad isn't 
a bad person, you know, <laughs> like something like that. Yep. I, th- I definitely, uh, for people that grew up with their parent as a coach, it's definitely like I, they can get under your skin more than any other coach can because they know so much about you and like know what you do every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent and completely relatable to that as well. And, um, definitely a, a good answer. What about like, uh, maybe like a professional athlete that you can compare yourself to maybe? Um, compare myself to, I, I try to model my game a little bit after uh, Bregman, just cause we're like both, we're like stocky, shorter guys with like, with power, power potential and numbers, but like get the, I don't know how to explain it, but I get Alex Bregman for sure. All right. And we asked this to some of our guests too. If you could go now, not really relating to baseball, it can be anybody. If you could go out to like some sort of dinner with somebody, two people, dead or alive, who would you pick and what are you ordering at dinner? All right. Um, so uh, the food is easy off the jump. I'm from Maryland. We're going to go blue crab and get all you can eat. That's my pick. And then mm, I'm going to go. I'm a big, I'm a big LeBron fan. So I'm going to go LeBron James. Just pick his, pick his brain. Cause it's like interesting that he's been so like dominant for so long. And his body hasn't really fallen apart on him. And he's just late into his 30s. Like, yeah. I would like to pick his <laughs> he does to take care of himself. And then the other person, I go, I'm not sure. Um, maybe, I don't want to pick two sports people, but Derek Jeter. Because I, my half my family's Yankees fans grew up had Derek Jeter jerseys. Loved, loved watching him play. So that's the captain. Got it. <laughs> you gotta tip your cap. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. That's interesting because I feel like Jeter had such a big impact on the entire baseball world. Really, not just Yankees fans. Like even if you were like a Mets fan, you had to respect him. Um, yeah. It was a- yeah. <laughs> and then with LeBron, that's pretty cool too. Because I'm I'm a Knicks fan, and he. When the Knicks were relevant in like the early 2010s, he beat us in the playoffs. Um, bad, bad blood there, and then he chose not to come here for free agency. But uh, yeah, you got to respect both of those guys. Definitely quality choices. And Maryland crabs, believe it or not, uh, crab legs. Like um, yeah, like not, I wouldn't say blue crab because that's not really a Jersey thing, but like uh, snow crab or king crab. It's one of my favorites as well. That's my opinion, but it's hard to. I just I don't want to get uh, blown up for picking a different one. You think you think uh, LeBron and Jeter like crab? You think that fits into their diet? Uh, I don't know. I <laughs> doubt it. But LeBron's whatever his diet. Who knows? Are you a big who like? Knows, who knows what that guy eats to stay that athletic for so long? Yeah. <laughs> are you are you big like uh, seasoning guy? Uh, Old Bay for sure. Yeah, and then some butter on the side. Yeah, it's pretty pretty uh. You know, pretty good choice there. Standard. Can't go wrong. Yeah, so um, we, we always ask this question to our athletes as well. If you had any advice to anybody, maybe going through a tough time, what would you say to them in any piece of advice you might have? Anyone going through a tough time, just knowing that things aren't like permanent. Like everything that you do will eventually with time get better. Like there's not like a, nothing is, nothing's, not, everything passes no matter what. Gotcha. Yeah, definitely solid. Like, so many people, like, I feel like with athletes, mental health especially goes really unnoticed. And the standard, like, oh, be, like, so hard-nosed and tough. But feelings are really important, you know, with sports. You can't play or do anything 100% if you're not feeling right. So we always ask it to our athletes to get, like, a perspective from someone who's now sort of a successful, like, leveling up their career to see how it affected them and anything they would have to say to, um, you know, a younger audience that's or anyone, really, that's going through something. So, yeah, thank you yep. for saying that. And nothing is ever easy like you said, just exactly like you said. You know, I think the hardest thing for athletes with, like, mental health is that we're judged so heavily on, like, our bodies and our athletic ability. And, like, no one really talks about, like, athletes and what their thoughts are, their emotions are like. We're judged off of what you can do and what you can't do. And there's not really a – it's not really a in-between – Absolutely, 100% correct with that. Um, yeah, you can't go wrong. 